on Facebook. On Facebook. I hope I enjoy. I hope you enjoyed your day. It's Wednesday. It's the middle of the week. Let us keep tabs this evening with one another. Um, talk to us while we're busy. Let's keep it going. Let's um, let's enjoy the evening together with one another. We started something last week called "Why We Need," as you can see right in the back of the board there. And we're going to continue with that, but let's just quiet ourselves before God this evening in the middle of the week and in the turmoil that we're facing during this time we're in. Father, we pray to you this evening that you would really speak into our hearts and our lives, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that you give us the opportunity of, of improving our relationship with you through small things, Lord, basic things which sometimes get left by the wayside. But so, Lord, we come to you this evening and we pray in your mighty name, Father God, that you would really help us educate us and let us grasp this evening what we're speaking about every every family tuned in father god every individual person tuned in speak into our lives this evening and make us stronger lord during this time in jesus name amen so i trust you had a good day everything um, you had you had your challenges i'm sure you had your challenges i think every one of us has challenges during during this period of time that we that we are faced in, in today when we last when we started off last week we we started off with with uh the the with god why we need god and we looked at him as the creator we looked at him as the provider and we looked at him as the as the redeemer of course that, that is who he is but today we want to just turn that around and 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 look at something which we we, we hold in our hands as christians probably I hope every day of our lives we hold something called the Bible in our hands. <clears throat> and should we go and read the, the, the Word of God and, and, and get closer to knowing God? Let me let me just ask you, is it would we would we get into our if I asked you this evening this question, why do you think you need the Bible? How would you answer me? How would you answer me on the question of why do you think we need the Bible? Both the, the, the old and, and, and the two the, the old and the New Testament is apt um, as the guide of to salvation and and of course as also the the the, the guide of, of comfort and, 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 and what will happen to us. It's the word of God, as I've always referred to to you. Many of you guys who walked this long way, you would know that we spoke, we speak about um, the voice of God. I love calling it that the Bible is is the voice of God, it's the way he, he speaks to us. <coughs> So God, as we as we as we visit this evening, let your let your comments flow because you uh, say how's it to everybody like Angelique you just said that now, and other people can speak to one another during the session. What I'm going to do is when once we've completed this, I'm going to cut this up not into the length that it was um, for the evening. I'm going to cut these into smaller segments, and, and I'm sure it'll help us when we when we've done with this whole thing. Let me just say this: assuming that one believes in the Bible. And that the Bible is the Word of God. We can say um, we need the Bible. Why? We, we need the Bible because of, of, of many things. And why do you think you need the Bible? Would it be possible to please God without the Bible? Would it be able to please God without His Word? Would it be able to would, would we be able to please God if we were disconnected from from the Bible, the Bible, the Word of God? Listen to me what, what the Word of God says in Hebrews 11 verse 6. <clears throat> and it is impossible, the Bible says, to please God without faith. Anyone who wants to come to him must believe that God exists and that he rewards those who sincerely seek him. It is impossible to please God without faith. It is impossible to please God without faith is a very, very, very important statement because it's faith that connects you and I to Christ. So without us indulging into the word of God, finding what that word means for us, it is impossible 
to please God. So God wants our hearts and his heart to be connected. And he wants to be pleased in the way that he sees us as his children. As to how we walk, how we speak, how we are taught, educated in his word. And when we, when, he, when we understand that, we start pleasing the heart of God. How cool is that? We start pleasing the heart of God. Because anyone who wants to come to him, the Bible says, <clears throat> must believe that God exists. So in other words, if I believe that God exists, and I believe that the Bible is the holy scripture of God, then I'm, my believing and my faith in the existence of God is then carried forth and helped me and, and I have the word of God to help me, which is the Bible, to strengthen me in my walk with him. Because many things that are happening to us today are things that happened many years ago. And those things that happened many years ago are there to help us, to erect us, and to make us stronger. <clears throat> John 8, 24 says, <clears throat> without faith, we cannot be saved. So how many people do we think are running around today, run around and say, I know, I believe, I do, but how do you believe and what do you do and how strong is your faith? Because your, strength, your, your faith will lead you to a place or have brought you from a place where you were saved. So John says that, he says this in the 24th verse of the 8th, 8th chapter, he says, that is why I said to you, this is Jesus, you will die in your sin. For unless you believe that I am who I claim to be, you will die in your sin. Wow, that's a tall statement. But that's so true. He says, Jesus says to you and I, he says, you will die in your sin. If, if, if he said it all these thousands of years ago, and that wasn't written in a manuscript somewhere along the line, and put down for you and I still to read it today, <clears throat> and be reminded of, of what he said all those thousands of years ago. And he said those things many, many years ago so that you and I could still be educated in his word today. And that education comes from the word of God, which is called the Bible. And that's why we need the Bible. We need the Bible to show that the Bible is a handbook for us as Christian people. It's a handbook to show us what the wrongs are, what the rights are, where the blessing comes. It shows us all these things. It teaches us, in other words. And what the Word of God does, it, produ it produces great, great, great faith. The more you get into it, the more you would understand. God speaks to us <clears throat> during the day. He speaks to us at night. He speaks to us when we pray. God speaks to us all the time. But the connection between God speaking to us is the way we have educated ourselves in the walk with God. And that education comes from the handbook of life. And the handbook of life is called the Bible. Now, my friend, maybe you don't have one this evening. I want to encourage you to find yourself one, to buy yourself one. And if you haven't got you haven't got the box or anything like that, speak so that we can find out, so that we can we can supply you maybe with one of those those books called the Bible because the Bible is important and we need the Bible to improve our relationship with Christ. Romans ten seventeen makes it so says it so cool. He says the faith for faith, so faith comes from hearing and that is hearing the good news about Christ. Faith comes from hearing. He says unless we heard just now. Unless we have faith, we cannot be saved. But where does that faith, unless we that unless faith he's talking about, where does that come from? Because if we we got a we had a year at somewhere. And that we, that hearing and that teaching had to come from someone who had heard it before. And so these things got handed down from generation to generation. That's why it's important that we, we come to a place where we can uplift this generation that we find ourselves in. So my challenge to you this evening is when we hear the good news about Christ 
as written in Romans 10, 17. What do we do with that good news? How does that good news that we have learned so much about from the pages of scripture increased your faith and increased my faith? The gospels were written for that purpose. The gospels were written so that the faith production could start. That people who believed could come to a place and start producing the faith that they've heard about, the faith that they that they've read about, the faith that they start feeling about. That there's, there's this whole thing that faith starts getting produced because the word of God is not no longer in the on a page, it, it has leaped off that page. And because of those that are hungry, those that are saved. And those that have received that seed starts growing. And what you and I become, once we've come to know Christ, we become these disciples in Jesus. And what do we do? We come to, to him as, as, a, as, as, a, as a lost person. He's, he fixes us up and he sends us as a disciple. He says, go and do more so that. We can, we can start multiplying the generation of faithful people. John 20 in 30 and 31 says it this, because there's a reason for these two verses, because this is the purpose of the book. It says that the disciples saw Jesus do many other miraculous signs in addition to the ones that are already recorded in this book others as well but these are written so that you may continue the ones that are written that you may continue listen to me the bible says that so you and i may continue that to, to, that jesus and live him out is the messiah and will be lived out as this messiah and if we receive him as the messiah we are showing the world that the messiah is actually the son of god Wow. And when we start believing in the Messiah, Jesus, the Son of God, and believing in Him, then we are saying to ourselves to such an extent that we've read that and we've been taught that by the Word of God. It's, it's, it's been given to us as evidence what has taken place. And we start and have received that same power and we can go out and start doing wonderful things and miraculous things in this life that we live in. By the power of the name of Jesus Christ. Wow, man. That is so cool. <clears throat> and that's just given to you and I. So that through through the Bible. Through the Bible. I think that should excite many people. So the Bible is not just a mission that I have to read the Bible. Because I'm a Christian. So this morning, ten for ten minutes, I'm gonna like read a, read a piece. I'm gonna rip, dip, 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 amen, and I'm out of there. And I've done my bit. No, it doesn't work like that. The Bible, the, the word says, has got to bring us closer to God. The Bible is 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 uh, is your hand book of producing faith. It's the voice of God on page speaking to you and I with an open heart. Receiving that seed and becoming productive Christians in this dark world that we live that we live in. You see, when people get saved, they get saved by God's power. Somebody say God's power. When people get saved, when they come to know Jesus, they get saved by God's power. And when we get saved by the power of God, there's a process that's been taken, a process that has taken place, which is a which is called born again. Refer back to, to John 3.3. 3. We, we, we are born again. I'll read that to you just now. We, that's when Nicodemus came to, to Jesus and, they, and, he, and he said to him, what must I do? Because Nicodemus understood it, the heart of Jesus. And he knew there was something more. <clears throat> and I find it so strange in, in, in the day and age that we live in is that people, people don't see, see it that way. 
people are it's just like man i'm in a place of i'm okay you know um i know i know how it works i know how it's put together <clears throat> i'm a christian i'm okay it's cool nobody's nobody's forcing anything jesus is just saying you, you don't force anything on anybody and as, as it is still today, nobody nobody forces us to buy a Bible. You ever thought of that? Nobody forces you to read the Bible. Nobody asks you and forces you to come up with truth from the Bible. No, not at all. The Bible, the Bible is the written word of the heart of God. And God's longing, his heart's longing for you and I to possess such a book. So that we would understand his heart. Is it important to be born again? I said to you just now that it's the story of Nicodemus. Nicodemus who, who worked in the temple. Nicodemus who, who, who was, a, was a teacher of religious law. But he didn't understand this thing. So he crept out at night. So his connections didn't see him. And he moved out there and he moved in the darkness. And he came to Jesus. Asked him, what is this thing about being born again? How do you go back into you, <clears throat> into your mother's womb? And Jesus replied to him, and he said to him, I tell you the truth. Unless you are born again, you cannot see the kingdom of heaven. Unless you are born again, you cannot see the kingdom of heaven so of course nicodemus is like dumbstruck and he says lord what do you mean what do you mean i can't i want to see that how can i go back into my mama's womb can't work for me it's not gonna happen for me and jesus says to him nicodemus <clears throat> i assure you no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and of spirit. Now, if you thought the Oak was Demokar, then he was first of all Demokar. Because he carries on. And he explains to him why it's important. You see, because water and spirit produces something. And what in spirit produces the receiving, which the Bible calls the incorruptible seed. That's the place to stop and you can say, but dude, where do you find all this stuff? In the Bible. That's why we need the Bible. That's why we need to understand what the word of God relates to, what the word of God all is. If, it, if you're receiving the incorruptible seed, because this is so cool, the incorruptible seed that we are receiving is God's word. And that word is the good news that is preached to you. Day in, day out, out of the book, from the book, when Jesus walked upon the face of the earth, when he came, when he empowered people to do, to do the same thing. That's what it is. 1 Peter 1, 23, in the beginning of 25, says it this way, for you have been born again. Have you? But not to a life that will quickly end. Not to a life that will quickly end. Your new life will last forever. Wow. Your new life will last forever because it comes from the eternal living word of God. Eternal living word of God. As the scriptures say people are like grass <laughs> their beauty is like a flower in the field the grass withers and the flower fades it's gone sat burnt crushed vine doff finished but the word of god lasts forever the bible says and in particular, that word is the word that we're proclaiming tonight, and it's called 
the gospel of Jesus Christ. And that's why we need the Bible. That's why you and I need to understand that the Bible in your Christian walk and my Christian walk is so important. Do you possess a Bible, my friend? Is it used? Is it paged? You say to me, it's on my phone. I say, can you take your phone out in a difficult circumstance? Can you read your phone when the, can you read your Bible when the batteries are flat? We need to understand. Do we make notes all the time? Are we called up in what we're doing? Are we doing those things? What is this word that is proclaimed in the gospel of Christ? 1 Peter 1.25 says, that word is good news that was preached to you. It's preached to me. It's, we're taking up good news. Peter, we're taking up good news, man. And it's good news that you and I are given. And that God, that gospel, and people argue about this thing, this, this fact what I'm going to just talk about right now. And people argue whether you should be baptized or you shouldn't be baptized. I don't want to argue with that. I'm just coming from what the word of God says about that you see the word of god says to you and i in mark 16 15 to 16 it makes this declaration and then he said to them go into all the world and preach the good news to everyone the good news to everyone anyone who believes and is baptized will be saved. Wow, wow, wow. Anyone who refuses to believe will be condemned. You ever see it that way? Ever read that verse that way? Ever receive that verse? Have you ever argued without even reading that verse? So where does that come from, Peter? So it comes from the Bible. That's why we need the Bible. That's why we need the Bible as a handbook of our of our daily life. That's why we got to we got to these things are given to us so that we can increase in our faith. We can cre increase in our salvation, and the redemption that we receive is it's not just a knot or a bow. It's living life. That when we get the Word of God and it starts duplicating itself through us. As people that have been saved, we walk around as the living word physically for the kingdom of God. Wow, man. How cool is that? How serious is that for us? Peter, throughout his life, when, when he started off on, on his evangelistical journey after being he may be in so much trouble, so, so much trouble with Jesus, but he, you know, he's just one of those acts that just stood up strong. And it's so, so, so cool for me to know that, that when, when, when God called him, when Jesus spoke to him, he said to him, you know what, I want to say this to you. What you and he said to him, your name, I'm going to build my church on that. It means rock. Petros, Petros means rock. So cool. So beautiful. So nice. Strong guy, Peter. Peter's like taught and he said, guys, come on. This is the word. Repent of your sin. Turn to God, man. Let's move on with this thing. Be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. And for the forgiveness of your sin. You will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, my friend. That's probably the best gift that you and I could ever receive is the gift of the Holy Spirit. The washing or the regeneration. And the renewing of God's spirit within you and I, which, which, which comes alive. 
which makes us different, which brings us into a place where we, where we start really understanding what the Word of God is. The Bible is not just a book that lies there, fills up with dust, and we don't read it. How can we, how can we call ourselves children of God and we, and we don't even know what's written between those two covers? And we shouldn't argue about what's written there. We'll never argue what's written there, that if, if when the Spirit of God touches us, He reveals the truth that is written there. That's called salvation. That's when we save, that's when we redeem, and that comes from one book called the Holy Bible. Irrespective of how many translations there are, some people they battle with, with a very difficult English. Some people want to hear it in their native tongue, and it's been translated into their native tongue. Some people have, have problem with, with big words and, and clever people have come, taken big words and they've just put them in everyday language so that we can all understand the Bible. And that's important that we understand the Bible. It's important that, the, that we receive these words and, and make it our own. And that's why it's important that we, we come to a place tonight and say, I now, know, I know, I now need, know that I need the Bible in my life. I know now why I need the Bible. That were those words written at the back of me now. Why we need, why do we need the Bible? Who saved us? Jesus saved us. Through, because of the righteous things we did? Not at all. Through his mercy, he saved us. Through his mercy, he saved us. He washed away our sins through the blood that was washed, that was given to us. So that we could receive. Once we've received that, we, we received the new life. And in this new life, we became a new being. And that new being which lives in us, the regeneration, is the holiness. And that holiness comes from the Holy Spirit, which, 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 which lives inside of us. And that makes us the different person. And you see, <clears throat> we couldn't do it on our own. And when we met Jesus to do these things, it was the power of Christ through the spirit of Christ in us that started doing his work in us. Paul was a tremendous apostle for the word of God. And he, and he writes there in, in, in the Word of God, and he, and he says, you know what, these things that happened before were examples for us. And, and if, I, if, I, if I look at the scriptures and I say that Paul wrote that, and he says it was examples for us, then I have to say, but those same examples that Paul writes about for them which were them, us at that time, is today us who is us today, if you get my drift. And that's where we are. And Paul says that these words written were to warn. To warn about things in this day and age. And Paul says, one thing I just want to I just want to mention to you guys. When you stand strong, when you think you are standing strong, be careful not to fall. And that's why we need the word. That's why we need the Bible. That's why we need to carry on. That's why we need it. Friend, let God help us today to remain faithful in the things that have been taught to us from the word of God. You know that these faithful things are, are also true things. We've been bought at an expensive price. It's been, it's, been, it's been written down for us. It's been given to us. All scriptures that are written in the word of God, every one of those scriptures have been inspired by God himself. And why does God inspire, leave us with a book full of inspired scripture? Why do you think that he leaves us with a, with page after page after page, with, 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 
this inspired scripture. He leaves us page after page with, with inspired scripture because it's simply this. Teaching us to do what is right. Teaching us to understand his heart. Teaching us to do his way. And it's saying to us, guys, you've got to read this. You've got to work through this because it's preparing you. I'm trying to equip you as my children. Because I want you to stand strong when things do come your way. And sometimes we look at the word of God and we don't just have to read Bible, which stands, we, most of us know what the abbreviation for Bible is. It's because it's, it's written, it's called the basic instruction before leaving us. So, so when, we leave, when we read into that and we see that, we mustn't just see the Bible as another book. What we need to do is we need to see the Bible as, as the saving value of the word of God. Can I say that again? Say this off to me. The saving value of the word of God for both young and old. Both, both ends of the scale. That's where we need it. The Bible tells the young people of today to keep your, your, your ways and, your, and the way that you keep it pure. Psalm 119 verse 9 says, and ask this question. How can a young person stay pure? And the answer to that is by obeying the word of God. It's written. People that walk out as servants of God are entrusted to God. And the word of God is entrusted to those folk. And if we entrusted to the word of God and we, we want to go out and make disciples and we don't know the knowledge concerning the word of God, we will destroy the kingdom of God. And the lack of knowledge concerning God's word was the destroying of Israel. Did, who said that? Peter, who said that? I'll tell you who said that. Hosea said that. Hosea said that in the sixth verse, he said, my people are being destroyed, being destroyed because they don't know me, says God. Since you priests refuse to know me, I refuse to recognize you as my priests. Wow, man, that's heavy. That's strong. And since you have forgotten the laws of your God, I will forget to bless your children. When he says, I forget to bless your children, he's talking about the next generation. That's why we're circling in this world that we are today. That's why we're circling because people have made, they've taken things and they've, and I don't want to go into that. I want to get involved with politics and stuff tonight. But I want to say this to you. If I look at what's happening around the world. And our unborn kids are being slaughtered by the thousands. How can we call ourselves children of God? We can't. We can't because that's not written in the word of God. That's why we need the Bible. The Bible keeps us up straight. The Bible keeps us. In, 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 in line, the Bible keeps us, if we, if we read and what we've read apply to our lives, then I'm telling you today that, that things will change for us. Things will be better. We will have a better understanding of, of what's written there. We, we, will, we will read and know that there's certain things that I'm doing in my life that I need to get rid of. If there's certain things that are bucking me, holding me back and, and, and I can't get out of where I should. And I, hey guys, get into the word, man. Find yourself a Bible, read it, and if you don't understand it, get somebody to explain it to you. It's not such a bad book. People say, it's a holy book. I say, yeah, it can only be holy if it's opened up. When it's closed, it can't be holy. It's just lying there. It's not, it's not, it doesn't have a purpose. The holy word of God doesn't, cannot be holy on a page. The holy word of God has got to jump off that page into your heart, into my spirit, and let us walk the walk. So that we can start talking. The talk. Let us get rid of the badness. The evil in our lives. And let us stay humble before God. Let us be in a, in a humble place. And, and say Father God. I come humble myself. Because I want you and the spirit that you've offered me. Implanted into my heart Lord. I really do Father. I really do Father God. I need that power. Because it's the power of your saving grace that saved my soul. It is. 
It's the power to comfort. Why does the hope, why, why does the power of God comfort us? Because it's it's the hope that he gives is which is in the comfort. There was a lot about, there was so much written about this hope. And it was provided from way back in the Old Testament times. Paul reminds the Romans in the book of Romans, and he says, then all of you can join together with one voice, giving praise and glory to God, the Father of the Lord Jesus Christ. The church in Rome he speaks to them. The Old Testament provides assurance of our hope, very much so, in Christ, because it illustrates how God always keeps his promise. It doesn't fail. If God promises something, he'll come through. And how much more is it illustrated in the New Testament? Providing exactly what I'm talking about now. The hope by re revealing the grace to be shown when Christ comes again. So what does Peter say to you and I? Peter says this, he says, prepare your minds. Prepare your minds. Folk, I just want to just ask us listening and if you tuned in this evening, I want to I challenge you and ask you that how well are our minds tuned to put into action self-control? All the hope that we have in this gracious, gracious salvation that we receive from Jesus Christ and which will be revealed to the world. How much of that have we embraced? How much of that are we holding dear to ourselves? It's God's, it's God's power to comfort. And you say to me, wow, God's power to comfort. Yeah. You know why? You know how he does that? Through the peace he gives. Through the peace offered to you and me. Especially when it reveals the means and the source of true peace. Let me talk to you a little bit about the means and the source of true peace. This, this well-known scripture, Philippians 4, 6, and 9. If I, if I call it out like that, many of you probably know it. But this just, how well do we know it? And, and right now, we, we worried about a lot of stuff. And I, and I wrote something this morning, Kitty, as well. And I wrote last night, which I, which I put on, on social media. Because the Bible says, don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. The Bible says that, man. The Word of God. That's why we need the Word of God. You just tell God what you need. Lord, this is what I need. And thank Him for stuff that He's done for you and I already. Thank you, Father. I went through that. I gave it. Father, you were, I need to experience this. If you understand those things, and if you are doing those things, you will, Peter, experience my peace. Wow. Isn't that cool? And then Pete says this, don't we need to fix our thoughts on what is true, what is good, what is uplifting? We must fix our thoughts on those things. And when we fix our thoughts on those things, we will know my life changes. I become this excellent piece of human being that God wants me to be. And that excellent human being that God wants me to be, God looks at me and he says, praise me because you're worthy, Peter, to give me praise. That's for you, my friend, and for me. Gifted. Peter, where do you get all this stuff from? I got it from the same book we read every day, friend. It's called the Bible. And that's why we need the Bible. Will you, will you, will you read it differently? Will you put it into practice? Which you, which that which you read, will you, will you, when you, when you've learned something, received something, go and live it out, the way Jesus wants you and I to live it out. Something called with something called inner peace. You see, it's, it's if we don't have inner peace, we, that's when we all over the show, we, we, we bounce around like, like a little, like a little ball in the pinball machine, zip, zip, zip all over the show. There's no inner peace, and we need that inner peace so that we can 
we can really think and, and know where we're going. Old Testament, Psalm 119, verse 165. Those who love your instructions have peace and do not stumble. Straight to the point. Those who love your instructions have peace and do not stumble. Those who love your instructions. Oh, man, Lord, I'm so sorry. Forgive me, Lord, if I've missed your instructions. But, Lord, I want to love them because that's going to bring me peace. Your, your instructions are going to sustain me, Lord. They're going to sustain me in a big way. And God wants to sustain you and he wants to sustain me. And you know what? The power of God brings us into a place and, and, he, and, he, and, he, and he says, there's happiness that I want to give you. I want you to be happy. I want, I want you to, to have the joy on your face. Shoot back with me quickly. Psalm 1 verse, 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 verse 1. Verse 1. One verse one, we get that right now. So on verse one, verse one, it says, Oh, the joys of those who do not follow the advice of the wicked, or stand in the in, stand with sinners or in, join in with mockers. We, not, we don't do not stand in another translation in the council of the evil ones and of the wicked. Who are our friends? Why are friends the ones that that aren't those people. We are delighted with, with people who have the same hearts as we do, who share the same words that we do. And if we can do that, we would find out that the, the light of God's law in our life is growing with leaps and bounds. We will become like trees planted at the water side, trees that, trees that will stand, trees, trees that will produce, trees that leaves never will wither, And then God says, those trees normally prosper. And so will you. But my word, which is the Bible, will teach you that. Daily Bible reading is important, my friend. Morning and at night. It's so important. We cannot go as a child of God, as a Christian, as someone who says we serve God. We cannot go one day without reading from the word of God. God speaks back to you and I through his word. God releases his answers to your prayer through the word. We can only get to know that once we find ourselves wrapped in it, made us the people that we are. To fulfill our need, we need the Bible. The Bible is so apt for you and I. God, God spoke through many ways upon the face of this earth. He spoke through the prophets. He spoke through his son. And there's great, great examples of faith. And you can read it in, in Hebrews in the 11th chapter. But the first verse says this. It says, faith shows the reality of what we hope for. It is the evidence of things we cannot see. Don't argue. Just come and know that his word is according to his heart. Let us come to a place this evening, a place as we walk in the way of salvation and receive hope and receive peace and receive the happiness that God gives. I really trust that you've enjoyed these few minutes with me. I really trust that you now understand why we need the Bible. We don't need the Bible to argue about. When we read the Word of God, which is solid, we'll start agreeing with one another. We'll start standing in unity with one another. We will change this world one heart at a time. May God help us. May God strengthen us. And may God give us the wisdom to understand. He's written infallible word of God that will not change. Doesn't matter who, what says. 
That's the way it is. That's the way it's going to stand. And that's the way it's going to end. Irrespective of what we think, what's written there will be forever and ever. May God help us to live out that living word. May we stand, may we come to a place tonight and say, Father, we understand. We do need the Bible. We need the Bible in a big way, Lord. So, my friend, as we end, may God give you the desire, the oomph. May God give you the enthusiasm to find out what's written in the Word of God. May God enlighten your ways. May God strengthen every plan that you've put down for your life. May God look after your family. May he bless your house. May he bless those who work for you. May he bless your family. Extended family. May he bless every single step that you take. May he bless the foundation your house is built on. For the word says, if he does not build that house, we are building it in vain. Take your word, take your Bible, and read it. It's such a good book to read. It's not monotonous. monotonous. It is not monotony. It is, it is so to the point. It is so true. Read it. Ask God to uncover it for you. And walk in these ways. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your word this evening. We thank you, Lord, that we could understand this evening what your heart is all about. We understand why you left manuscripts for us. We understand why you used people, raised people, gave people the ability to write and put pen to paper so that we could have this book so many thousand years later. Because, Father, when you created the human, you knew exactly what you required of the human. And Father God, what was required so many thousands of years ago is still required today. And there's one simple word, and that's a relationship with you, Lord. And Father, the only way we're going to build our relationship with you is by finding your hearts, is by walking in your ways, and by opening up the handbook of life and discovering what you really require from your sons and your daughters and the generations that are to come. I pray, Father God, that you would really, really uncover the hearts of your children this evening. May we understand what is written. May we understand how to action it. And if we don't, Father God, we, we pray to you this evening. And I speak, pray, Father, for everyone that's tuned in, everybody that will hear this message. Father, you would speak into their lives. And that you would uncover, Father, through the working of your Holy Spirit in each and every one of us. To find more and to be touched, to be strengthened, to be guided, and to become witnesses. Not on our own, Father God, but from the word written in brick and mortar, which will not fade. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Be blessed, my friend. Thank you for joining me. Join me again next Wednesday, same time, where we will carry on. Why do we need? Love you guys so much from the bottom of my heart.